What's up everybody? This is Kulu back again with Toma Music. We're doing another trumpet lesson today and the focus is going to be on the question that I get more than any other question, which is how do I work on my trumpet tone? This lesson is going to be a breakdown of my daily routine, highlighting some of the most important things that I do to develop my tone. So the first thing we're going to talk about is tension. Now, it's normal to have some degree of tension when you're playing the trumpet, but what we're going to try and do is achieve a level of tension that is minimal and is not interfering with your sound in any substantial way. So there's three different places where we most often hold tension in our bodies when we're playing, and that's going to be the shoulders, the neck, and the face. When I start doing my long tones in the morning, I try and do this exercise that while I'm holding the note on the trumpet, I try and picture these different parts of my body that are feeling tense, and I flip this on switch in my head and I turn it off. So I can feel the tension in my shoulders, and I just think turning that off, and I feel like get relaxed. I go to my neck, I think about the tension in my neck, I turn that off, I let that relax. And I'm holding the note and I feel the tension in my lips, I do the same thing as well. So it's important to think about the tension that you're experiencing, and through being conscious of it, you're able to relax those muscles. So when you're doing your long tones every morning, make sure that you're taking a moment to think about the tension. Essentially what tension is doing is it's choking the resonance of the instrument um, by constricting the airflow. So when you're tense here, and you're tense here, you're all of a sudden getting a sound that is much smaller and has way less resonance. You're not going to get those beautiful harmonic qualities that you want out of a good trumpet tone. That's the first step. Let's move on to the next thing. Next, I want to talk about an exercise that I do on the trumpet that really helps me connect my ear to my embouchure, and that's going to be lip bends. We're going to run through a couple of quick exercises that I do in the morning, um, but first we'll talk about them a little bit. So I'm going to start on a middle G, and what I do is I hold the G and I move down to an F sharp and then back up very slowly, and then I do the same thing, but instead of playing the F sharp, I bend down to the F sharp. So let's try that together. We'll do a few more of those and we'll be on to the next thing. One, two, three. So, you can apply that exercise in a chromatic scale going up and down the range of the instrument. It's also really helpful to play this exercise while having a drone playing in the background. So, if you're doing it, um, there's a cello drone that you can use that um, is going to be on like a concert F when you're playing a G. That's going to be a really helpful thing to do because with lip bends, you're intentionally bending the note out of the center of the pitch, and by returning to the center, and using your ear at the same time, you're getting an opportunity to find that centered pitch again, making sure that it's like really in tune. So lip bends, super essential, practice them, they'll make a big difference. The next thing I'd like to talk about in terms of tone development is gonna be transcribing. Oftentimes people associate transcriptions with jazz solos, which don't get me wrong, that is like the core of them and they're super important to do. But I don't want you to limit yourself to that either. So you wanna kind of put together different kind of musicians that you wanna sound like and it shouldn't just be trumpet players. So I have a lot of trumpet players that I transcribe their solos and their music um, and that's super important. But also I transcribe pieces that Yo-Yo Ma is playing on the cello. And I find that to be very helpful as well. It gives me kind of a better example when I'm trying to get a deep resonant tone on like the flugelhorn, for example. It's very important to have trumpet players that you're listening to and transcribing, but make sure that you have a few other instruments in there as well, vocalists, guitar players. It'll really help kind of specify the kind of sounds that you're going for on the trumpet and it kind of expand your idea of what a trumpet can sound like. <laughs> The 
final part of my daily trumpet tone routine is recording myself. Just like you have football players and other athletes recording their games and their practices, you've got to record yourself when you play your trumpet because you're not going to be able to truly hear what you sound like when you're sitting behind the mouthpiece. A lot of the sound and the actual sound in the audience hears is what's being projected out of the bell. So I make sure that whatever I'm working on that day, at the end of my practice session, I take a good 10-15 minutes to record what I've been working on that day, and I go and listen back to that. If you're transcribing music, record the transcription that you're learning, and then take a moment to play the transcription that you just recorded and the original. And it's always helpful to take a little bit of time to take notes on the differences that you're hearing in the sounds. Um, I find that to be super helpful. Overview of what we went over today. Releasing tension in your body. Practicing lip bends with your long tones in the morning. Transcribing music, not just trumpet players. And recording yourself playing. Even if you do this just three days a week, it's going to make a substantial difference in your playing. It's really easy, especially with trumpet players, to kind of get caught up in this like, how high can I play? How fast can I play? How long is my endurance when I'm playing? And although those things are all important in developing these technical skills on the instrument, the whole concept of playing trumpet in music is how well can you convey the emotional qualities of the music that you are performing to yourself and to the audience. And a lot of that is going to come down to how intentional you can be with the sound you create on the instrument. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment below and I will get back to you. I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.